Hi, my name is Greg Martin. I was asked to speak at the Global Health Next Generation Network conference in Barcelona 2014. I couldn't make the dates, and so basically, instead of me being there in person, we've decided to create a quick video and we're gonna put that up. At the end of this talk, the plan is, all going well, to have me available over cell phone to answer any questions that you might have. Anyway, I'm delighted to be here in the sort of virtual sense of the word, and I've been asked to talk about entrepreneurship in the global health space. Now, first of all, let me just say that I'm not an expert in this. I know that there's people out there that have done research into this area, that have done studies, that have got all sorts of expertise and knowledge and insight into entrepreneurship and global health. And there's also people that have been far more successful than me in getting startups off the ground and doing interesting things. What I can talk about, however, is the fact that I've tried a lot of stuff. Some things have worked, some things haven't worked. There's been success, there's been failure, there's been me bashing my head against the wall. But essentially, along the way, there's certainly been a lot of lessons learned, and I think that's what I wanna talk about today. And I suppose even before I get going, the number one lesson learned. If there's one thing that I want you to take away from this talk, it's this. Don't be afraid to fail. If you've got an idea that might make a difference, don't wait for everything to be perfect before you give it a bash. You're never going to have universal support for your idea. You're never going to have somebody just throwing buckets of money at it. You've got to roll your sleeves up, give it a go, and hopefully the right people will see your enthusiasm, will believe in your idea, you'll identify money, and you'll be able to make the world a better place. But very often you're going to have a great idea, you're going to have a lot of enthusiasm for it, you're going to try and sell the idea to stakeholders, and it's just not going to take. And if that happens to you, don't be disheartened. It might be that the idea gets traction at some future point down the line. It might even be that somebody else picks up on the idea and they make it happen. So if we go way back when I was a junior doctor, this was about 1999, I was working in pediatrics in a town called Umtata in South Africa. And I noticed that a lot of the children would come into the clinic having already been to a traditional healer. And at these traditional healers, they'd often be given some sort of herb or traditional remedy. So I had the idea of establishing a little network, some sort of platform on which the doctors treating patients could actually reach out to and communicate with the traditional healers and find out what it is that they'd given. So my first port of call was to speak to the superintendent of the hospital. He liked the idea. I spoke to the other doctors that I worked with. They liked the idea. And of course, I got in touch with some of the local traditional healers and they loved the idea. And for a brief time in a sort of ad hoc way, we had some sort of relationship between the doctors and the traditional healers. But the problem was, and this is perhaps the first lesson learned from my failed ventures, is that I didn't think about sustainability. I didn't think about the fact that by, when I left that hospital and went on, and then from there I went on to work at the Joburg Gen, there wasn't anything in place to keep those relationships going, anything in place to keep that venture alive and kicking. And so shortly after that, of course, the whole thing just petered away. My next attempt at trying to get some new venture off the ground was this idea that I had of starting up an HIV radio station. At the time, I was working at the Perinatal HIV Research Unit in Soweto, South Africa. It occurred to me that a huge number of mothers were coming through the antenatal services, getting HIV tests, getting HIV positive results. I think at the time in Soweto, we were, uh, we were getting about one third of all mothers were getting an HIV positive result. But these mothers weren't being given a lot of information about how to keep well and how to engage the health system. This was in the early 2000s. And a lot of these women were not educated. They didn't really know what HIV was. They certainly didn't know what an opportunistic infection was or what antiretrovirals were or what it meant to be immunocompromised. And so my idea was to start a local radio station which was specifically for HIV positive women. Of course, anybody else could listen, but we were gonna target HIV positive women and ensure that they had a ready supply of good quality information about HIV. My underlying idea was that you don't necessarily need to try and reach the entire population. If you've got a small sprinkling of very well-informed women, you land up reaching a much larger community. So my first step was to pitch the idea to the people that I worked for, and they were very happy with it. And of course, I ran the idea past people in the local community and they loved it. And finally, of course, I needed to raise money. Now, this was my first ever attempt at fundraising. And let me say this, fundraising can be a soul-destroying process. I put together a small business plan, and I think I must have sent that out to more than 200 funders. Most of them didn't respond at all. Of those that did respond, most of those said that this wasn't part of their current strategy, or they said that I was making this application in the wrong point in time in their funding cycle. Essentially, the problem was that because the idea was genuinely new, no one was doing this. It's also the case that funding agencies weren't putting out a call for proposals about radio stations and HIV. It just wasn't being done at the time. I was, however, lucky enough to get a response from the Open Society in South Africa. We had a meeting with them and they were happy to give us money. The problem was that their strategic objective at that point in time was to provide funding for research into the idea of radio content being used in the sort of fight against HIV in general and not to start up a radio station per se. And the mistake that I made was that I got so excited about the idea of getting some money that I lost sight of my original vision and I got sidetracked and distracted and pulled away into the vision and mission of a funding agency. And that happens very often. And so we landed up doing a small research piece on radio content and HIV and it actually amounted to nothing. 
Now, getting a radio station up and running had other challenges, and I don't want to get into that. I mean, we needed to get licensing, and that turned out to be just about impossible in South Africa. But the lesson here is, if you've got an idea, and you've got a vision, and it's something you really want to do, and a funding agency comes to you and says, look, we're going to give you money, but we want to change what it is that you want to do. If you really believe you were right about your original idea, then stick to your guns. There's nothing wrong with taking some money and doing something that's slightly eccentric from your idea if it's a stepping stone to you getting to your goals. But don't lose sight of your vision. On the radio HIV idea, I lost sight of the vision, and to my knowledge, 15 years later, there still isn't a dedicated HIV radio station. At the same time as trying to start up this HIV radio station, there was something else that I was trying to get off the ground as well. Now, just for a bit of context, this was at a point in time when the South African government was not providing antiretrovirals for people with HIV. I happened to be working in a research unit that was providing antiretrovirals for HIV positive pregnant women. A big challenge of course was trying to ensure that the women that were given the drugs were actually taking the drugs every day. So I made the suggestion that we send each of these women a text message every day reminding them to take their medicines. The idea was that they would get a text message every day saying take your medicines today. They would reply to that message and if we didn't get a reply from a particular woman we would phone her up and ask her if there was a problem. Now I know that today this is reasonably commonplace but this was 15 years ago and at that point in time nobody was doing this. I was struck by the fact that it was incredibly easy to do. A friend of mine who is an engineering grad it, put together a little widget, you stuck a SIM card into it, it connected to the computer, you typed in a message and it would go to whatever cell phone numbers that you gave it and their replies would also come back and pop up on the screen. Now when I try to get this idea off the ground, I failed to sell the idea. In other words, I failed to get the right stakeholders and the right support behind the idea. Now, of course, since then, a lot of people have done this sort of thing, and in some cases, it's been very successful, in other cases, not. The important thing here is that this is an example of where it's okay to fail. If it's a good idea and enough people know about it, eventually somebody will do it and it'll work somewhere. The next thing that I tried, and, and this in fact did work out, was I started a little charity called Books for Africa. This wasn't really about health, it was more about literacy, but I'll tell you about it anyway. The problem that I was trying to solve here is that there were a lot of people out there around the world who I was sure would be happy to make a small donation to Africa for literacy, but they weren't necessarily happy to give their credit card numbers out to some charity that they'd never heard of. My Books for Africa charity allowed them to make a purchase through Amazon.com, which is a site that of course they already trusted and they weren't concerned about their credit card numbers going awry. They could buy a book for a child in Africa and put the charity's physical address as the delivery address for the book. So it really did two things. It facilitated the transaction, but it also meant that the charity itself didn't really have any running costs. The costs for the purchase and the distribution and the supply of the books was all built into whatever it is that they paid on Amazon, and the books came to South Africa and we simply distributed them. And that worked really well, and we eventually ended up partnering with Rotary, and they got involved with the distribution of the books within South Africa. Now you'll notice that as I describe these various ideas that I had, what I'm trying to do is frame them in terms of what the problem was that I was trying to solve. And that's going to be extremely important if you want to get funding for your projects. Now the next problem that I tried to solve was one that I bumped into when I was studying at LSHDM. One of the modules that I was doing in my masters was globalization and health and I became particularly interested in the subject matter. And I remember wanting to read more and more about it and so I looked for a journal that published on globalization and health and couldn't find any. So I thought, well, I'll start one. So at that point, I got the word out far and wide, I'm trying to start a journal on globalization and health, this is exciting. In fact, most people that got back to me at that point in time said, it's not a good idea, it's never gonna work, it's too difficult, etc., etc., so on and so forth. But anyway, I kept trying and I kept trying to reach out to people and get some energy and excitement behind the idea. And eventually I sent an email to Derek Yak, who at the time was the executive director for non-communicable disease at the World Health Organization. Now I'd met Derek briefly in Geneva a few years before then and he had given me his card. And so I shot him an email saying, hi, Dr. Yak, this is Greg Martin. I don't know if you remember me, but you know, we met in Geneva two years ago. This is my idea. I think we should start a journal on globalization and health. And Derek replied to the email literally within about five minutes of me having sent it, saying, fantastic idea. I like it. Let's do it. Let me know how I can help. And so I approached Biomed Central, they're a publishing company in London, they agreed to meet with me, and we've been publishing Globalization and Health for the last 10 years, and we've had papers downloaded more than two and a half million times. Now in order to start the journal, we didn't have or need any money, but I did want to raise some money to do some projects. And so to get money for the journal, this is what I did. I found a fund at the Department of Health in the UK that I thought might be interested in funding us. And I went online and I researched and I found who I thought would be a decision maker within that organization. I phoned the organization up and I said, I'd like a telephone appointment with that person. They gave me a time and a date, but I had to wait six months for that phone call. And when this particular person took the call, they told me they were in a big hurry. What did I want? I've got five minutes. So I used that five minutes to talk about the vision for the journal, where it is that I wanted to go, what it is that I wanted to do. And of course, this person turned to me and said, look, why don't you just make an application like everybody else? And I said to her, look, I haven't got the time to make an application. I'm working full time. I'm running the journal part time. 
I need you to give me money so that I can hire someone to fundraise. And to my surprise, she said, yes, how much do you want? And at that point, I said I'd like 15,000 pounds. I probably should have asked for more. The next idea that I had was to create an online platform on which you could put an academic paper, which would, be, which would be translated into a number of different languages. A person would read the paper in whatever their vernacular language was. They could then make a comment on the paper, and all the comments from wh wherever they were being made would be translated into all of the languages that the paper was being translated into. In other words, you could have a dialogue around a paper, and each person would be reading and responding to that dialogue in their own language. Now to raise money for this idea, what I did is I phoned someone that I knew was very interested in global health. It happened to be a person working in a private company, but they had, let, I, I imagine it was corporate social responsibility spend. They gave us money and we started this platform. It didn't really work out. And again, it's, 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 it's a failed idea, but I think there's lessons to be learned. What we didn't do well enough was network within the global health community of people that were, were vernacular uh, is French and Spanish speakers, which, which were the two other, language, two other languages we were trying to uh, translate everything across into. It might also be that the idea was slightly before its time, because right now you could do the same thing with Google Translate, and it would be much cheaper and easier to do. My next venture was to start the Global Health YouTube channel. Now, in this case, I was trying to solve two problems. The one was that the YouTube channel, that the YouTube as a, as a, as a, as a social platform, in my opinion, has been grossly underutilized in terms of its, the, the capacity to have, to have an impact in the global health space. The other problem that I was trying to solve was that I had moved to Dublin because I, I've, I've married an Irish lass, and I wanted to continue to be connected with the global health dialogue, but I needed to do it from home in Dublin without necessarily being physically present in Geneva where I'd, I had been previously. And YouTube is a terrific social platform for that sort of thing. And the YouTube channel has been doing really well. I've had a lot of fun with it, and I've met some fantastic people through it, not least of whom have been the people that organized this conference in Barcelona. There are quite a few other little things that I've tried over the years that I'm not gonna get into now, I'm actually currently involved with a startup that I'm expecting to launch in the next few days. And as I said before, I think there's a lot of people out there that have done things that are extremely exciting and perhaps much more impactful than anything I've done. But what I'd like to perhaps leave you with is the, the, a summary of the lessons learned and a summary of the perhaps the big things to keep in mind if you're thinking about being entrepreneurial in the global health space. The first is don't be afraid to fail. If you try something and it didn't work out, it's not the end of the world. You may need to try a few things before you bump into the thing that works. The second is you've got to reach out to the right stakeholders. If you try to do everything on your own, you're gonna find it extremely difficult. The third is that you need to try to clearly define what problem it is that you're trying to solve because that's probably the only way that you're gonna get funding. The fourth is to have a sustainability plan in place. Your idea needs to be able to live beyond your involvement with it. And finally, when it comes to fundraising for your idea, you need to ask, 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 and ask. And one last thing, if you have an idea, don't be too rigid about it. In other words, get it out there, talk to people, let them make an input, make a contribution, and let your idea change and evolve off the back of what people tell you. You might find that at the end point of a whole lot of discussion, the idea itself is quite different, but a much more powerful concept. I hope that you found this useful. Stay enthusiastic, be novel, think creatively, don't get disheartened, focus on the goal, always do your best and don't ever change. Take care.